Hello, everyone. My name is Ted Zeroni, and I'm a designer of professional learning with the Alberta Regional Professional Development Consortia, or the ARPDC. In this short, short session, I'd like to take you through um, the organization of the curriculum support document in the sense of how it moves from surface to deep to transfer. When you do look at the document, the curriculum support document, you'll see the words uh, sample surface learning activities, sample deep learning activities, and so on. And this uh, short video is to help you understand why those are there and what they actually mean. Um, what we're doing with the science curriculum is looking at through the lens of the, um, the Hattie Fisher and Fry model of the surface deep and transfer phases of learning. And what they suggest is that learning goes through different phases. We begin, first of all, with the surface level. And that's where students are initially uh, uh, showing ideas and concepts. They learn the foundational skills and, and facts and knowledge that will help carry them through the unit. It's not to be taken lightly. Um, we want to make sure that students do have a strong foundation in certain skills that they're going to use or certain concepts that they're going to use throughout a unit of study or, or throughout the rest of their course. And that foundation learning happens at the surface level. Once we know that they have a good solid foundation, we can move to the deep learning. And the deep learning is where we make connections between those individual concepts, where we become a little bit more independent and better at the skills that we use. And we start consolidating and extending the learning for providing students opportunities to learn and apply those things in different contexts. And we're providing students an opportunity to use and apply those skills and, and uh, understandings in different contexts. We're essentially helping students to transfer that. And so we move from deep to transfer uh, in, a, in a progression, so to speak. Um, we're already transferring the deep level when we give students a, a new context to learn an idea. For example, if we're asking students to find an example of a mammal by looking at a picture and they could identify the mammals. That's already starting to transfer. We show them a different picture. We already have a new context for them. And so they're beginning to transfer based on that new context. Uh, so the transfer is when students can use their skills and take their understandings fairly independently and provide a new and novel context and say, I recognize what this is all about. I can look at it this under at this situation through the through the understanding that I have or I can apply this skill to solve a problem in this particular context. Um, just to help maybe understand those three phases a little bit better, I like using the volleyball analogy. Uh, those of you who played sports uh, like volleyball um, or coached or anything like that, and certainly for Zed, we've all gone through this. We learn some of the basic things about volleyball. We learn what a bump is. We learn what a set is. We know what it is as a thing. We see it. And then we learn how to do it. We learn the skill of actually doing it. And we go through a lot of practice. And as we're doing it, we might learn that the ready position and what it is and how to how to be ready for the ball before when it comes across the court. How do you move to the ball? How, in other words, how do you shuffle to get to, to the position? And we start practicing those skills. And then and once we realize, OK, uh, we're pretty good at doing those things, let's put it together. Let's consolidate that learning into uh, a scrimmage and put it all together. And so we scrimmage and practice. And you notice uh, we keep going back and forth between that surface and deep just to just to make sure we go back and practice some more and we add on and we layer on perhaps so we can get a, a really deep understanding or a really uh, or a, a, a very um, solid understanding of uh, the skills and the procedures along the way. And finally, we get to a point where we can take what we know uh, and apply that to uh, new teams. We play different teams who, who, who play a little bit different than our teammates. So we're, we're giving a new context and learning how to play those games in new contexts. And we take even something like the ready position and shuffle, and we can even transfer those into other sports, such as badminton or basketball or football. So that again is the phases of learning uh, that help students take what they know and, and, be, and do and transfer it to new situations. We can see this kind of reflected in, in the current curriculum, uh, the new science curriculum, I should say, where you know the knowledge piece kind of um, equates to the service level, because that's what we know uh, that all the definitions and examples of those individual skills and concepts are there. It's the knowledge that we use. And then we go to the understanding. 
that's when we put those pieces together. And that's what creates the understanding, which we'll look at shortly. And then what we do is we transfer, we give students a, a skill to use and a context to use, and they take it and they demonstrate what they know and understand by doing something. They can compare and contrast, they can evaluate, they can discuss, and we give them different contexts in which to do those things. As an example, uh, this is, um, we could, let's take the three concepts or ideas of human activities and change and the Earth's surface. As separate knowledge pieces, we can get students to understand what those are in, as individual bits of knowledge or concepts or, or pieces of knowledge. So something happens though when you put those three ideas together in some kind of a relationship, kind of some kind of a logical understanding. For example, we can take those three ideas and, and create the understanding that change on the Earth's surface affects human activities. We could find examples of that. If there's an earthquake, uh, or a volcano or a landslide, that change in the Earth's surface can certainly affect human activities. But there's another understanding using those exact same three uh, bits of knowledge or concepts. It's, and it's how we relate them that creates a different understanding, even though the concepts are exactly the same. For example, human activities can cause changes to the Earth's surface. That also is true, a different understanding than the above understanding, but still true. We know that human activities, and we can see and give examples of how human activities change the Earth's surface. And we get, then we could transfer that to different things. We can have students perhaps make a concept map that, that shows how uh, changes on Earth's surface and human activities are related. Or perhaps we can compare and contrast how human activities change the Earth's surface in two separate locations. So we're providing a skill and a context for students to practice and to deepen and to transfer their understanding. Now we can take a look at our curriculum uh, through that lens of surface deep and learning. On the right-hand side in the knowledge uh, column, we see those individual concepts being defined there. In previous uh, organizing ideas, um, change on Earth's surface was looked at. And now we get the definition of human activities uh, and what they are and some examples of what human activities are. And we see how those ideas are related in the understanding. And you could see then that how the skills and procedure statement provide a, a, a skill such as relate uh, and having students do something to the with the understanding. In this case, they're gonna relate the understanding. Um, you'll notice that for um, the, the idea of a relationship and what's a concept map, if we're going to have them use a concept map, uh, isn't in the skills and procedure statement. And that would be some knowledge that they would need to know and a skill that they would need to know before they do that. And so that brings us back to our surface deep and transfer. We take those three uh, ideas of human activities and change and the land on earth or the earth's surface and that skill that was in the skills and procedures column relate. And we find out, well, what is a relationship at the surface level? How can we show relationships? And maybe concept maps is the way you might want to do that. But there are other ways to show that as well. But we practice those things and, and understand those separate concepts at the surface level first. Once we know they can, they're good at that, then we can go to the deep level and the transfer level. You could see that the, the deep level now we're taking a look at the understanding, not just the individual concepts. And we're providing different contexts uh, in for this particular understanding, such as the prairies. Uh, how do plants or animals or other um, animals uh, affect or cause changes to the Earth's surface? Let's look at the prairies. Or maybe we could look at urban sprawl as another context. And again, we're just using the, the, uh, the skill relationship that showed up in our skills and procedures. But we may want to deepen and uh, transfer those that understanding by using a different skill. So they can show their understanding by relating, but they can also demonstrate their understanding of the um, concepts and understandings by comparing and contrasting. In this case, compare and contrast human activities to the changes in the Earth's surface in two locations. Once again, if that was something I was going to do, I would go back to the surface level, make sure at the surface uh, that they've had it at the surface level, had practice and some opportunities to learn how to compare and contrast before I say, oh, ask them to use compare and contrast to demonstrate what they know. 
So those are things to keep in mind as you're as you're moving along. And that's why when you look at our curriculum support document, you'll see some of these things just comparing and contrasting or relating, showing up as sample surface level activities. And then you can do assessments along, along the way here. At the surface level, to make sure students understand those individual skills or concepts, you're gonna be doing some formative assessments, as well as uh, at the deep level, when you're, the students are putting together those concepts and understanding, and you're working with the, at the understanding level, you're gonna keep on providing students opportunities to apply that understanding to different contexts. And finally, the summative assessment should also have a, a new context that students have never uh, seen before, so that uh, when they are working with it, we know they're not recalling information, but actually transferring what they can do and what they understand to a new context. So that is how um, our curriculum support document is organized. You'll notice that I'm going to go back one slide. You'll notice that um, with the summative assessment, what we do here in our curriculum support document is put it at the front end because in order to, if we have our summative assessment plan, we are gonna know what specific concepts, skills, understandings, and so on that the students are gonna know because we've already planned our summative assessment. So when I begin my teaching, I'm gonna go back to the surface level and make sure they understand these particular things and make sure they have the understandings that's required to do the assessment. So that's why you'll see this assessment level up front. Here's what we're going to do. And then the remainder of the curriculum support document are, are samples of activities that you can use at the different levels. But for example, you'll see the term here, sample surface level activities. Well, this particular knowledge here is saying that students are that students will learn that animals and plants have needs. And well, what is a need? And so there's some basic um, uh, lessons there that introduces needs. What does survival mean? What does an environment mean? And so those are some sample activities that can be done. Here's another example of a surface level activities. You notice in the skills and procedure that the um, that the verb here is re represent. So to demonstrate what students understand, they're going to represent. It may be a good idea then at the surface level to talk about, well, what is a representation and give examples of different representations so students can then use that skill and that understanding in their learning. And then when we get to the deep level, you'll see that there are sample deep level activities. So here's where we're working with the understanding and um, some deep level activities that help with develop that understanding. And then some assessments that can be used at the deep level to assess that understanding. And I'm just gonna go back a slide because also in the uh, formative assessment pieces, we can also have some as formative assessments happening at the surface level. So you were just learning, working with the knowledge here, some sample sur surface activities here, and then the assessments would be assessing at that surface level, to making sure students are ready to move on to uh, a, a deeper level of understanding. And that's pretty much how the, org, uh, the organization in the curriculum support document works. So when you see those, those, um, those headings of seat or surface and deep, you'll know uh, what they mean and how they, how they fit into the whole learning process of their students. So good luck. We hope that this has been helpful in helping you understand the curriculum. If you have any questions, please do contact me. Contact me. You can see my contact information there. Uh, or Chris Sarsky as well. We've been working on this uh, this together and uh, working on this type of um, process or interpretation of the curriculum together with this. So please do contact us if you have any questions. Thanks, everyone.